You compared Donald Trump to a third world dictator yesterday in an interview with the New York Times. How so? Well, I don't know about a dictator. I said a third world strongman. Uh, you know, he, he's running for president, so no matter what, he won't be a dictator unless our republic completely crumbles, which I don't anticipate it will. But yeah, here's what happens in many countries around the world. You have a leader that emerges and basically says, forget, don't put your faith in yourselves, don't put your faith in society, put your faith in me. I'm a strong leader and I'm going to make things better by all by myself. This is very typical. You see it in the third world. You see it a lot in Latin America for decades. It's basically the argument he's making that he single-handedly is going to turn the country around. We've never been that kind of country. We have a president. The president is an American citizen who serves for a period of time, constrained by the constitutions and the powers vested in that office. The president works for the people, not the people for the president. And if you listen to the way he describes himself and what he's going to do, he's going to single-handedly do this and do that without regard for whether it's legal or not. Um, look, I, I think people are going to have to make up their mind. I can tell you this, no matter what happens in this election, for years to come, there are many people on the right, in the media, and voters at large that are going to be having to explain and justify how they fell into this trap of supporting Donald Trump. Because this is not going to end well one way or the other. We had police officers, the men and women that we walk by every single day that guard the doors and we say hello to, out there with riot gear getting spit on and attacked. Today, not 10 weeks ago, just a few hours ago. And I think it's important to think about all those things on a night like tonight and everything that's happened. You know, I, I wouldn't even be here today. I, I doubt very much where I would even have been interested in politics had it not been for my grandfather. He died when I was 14, but I grew up at his knee. He would sit on the porch, he would smoke three cigars a day, and he loved history. He was born in 1899 in rural Cuba. It was still governed by the United States. It was a protectorate. Three years later, it gained its independence and became a republic. During my grandfather's first 60 years of life, he saw his country have an armed insurrection after a contested election, multiple presidents go into exile, two military coups, and the rise of a Marxist dictator. A tyranny that stands to this day. My entire life, my entire life, I have lived with and next to people who came to America because their country was chaotic and their country was unsafe. What I saw today, what we have seen, looks more like those countries than the extraordinary nation that I am privileged to call home.